See if I can do it. Art should improve your life and who you are. It should lead to some sort of emotional or spiritual growth, otherwise why bother having it? Because I mean, like, it's very boring anyway. But I'm actually really interested in sound, I'm really interested in colour, I'm really interested in how everything I do, how it is, and doing it the way I want it to be and how it needs to be. A to Z of your heart You said we never have to part This is Billy Childish, poet, painter, singer, dreamer the most wildly creative and yet underappreciated of British artists. His friend, the great painter Peter Doig, described him as one of the most outstanding and often misunderstood figures on the British arts scene. Well, it's a picture of a chap with a hat on. Who is that chap? It doesn't matter, it's Universal Man. Now 50, Billy's a cult figure with some passionate and famous fans. The White Stripes cite him as a musical influence and Johnny Depp collects his paintings. But what really makes Billy tick? I've come to spend the day in Kent to get beneath the surface of Britain's biggest art enigma. You've got these sort of incredible waves of creativity coming out of you. You know, you're sort of in the band, you're doing poetry, you're, you're writing poetry, you're painting, you know. People would say an indecent amount of painting, an indecent amount of records, an indecent amount. And if I do that, it must be no quality control. That's not actually true. I have a lot of quality control. I am Billy Childish, ex-drunk and compulsive masturbator, late night vomiter of good liquor, kisser of purple lipped women, writer of poems celebrating the emptiness of my love, poems hungering for the moment of my passion, wishing it could always be so, to never let my cock fall. I am Billy Childish, ex-strong man and two-bit lover, late night namer of names, corrupter of the literate, writer of poems that dare to dream to pass down the centuries and touch the hearts of the yet to be born, wishing to hold them to my arms and kiss them all. I am Billy Childish, ex-poet and failed suicide, late night vomiter of truth and lies, kisser of the asses of girls like the stars of God, writer of poems to lick the thighs of the dead, for ex-lovers to denounce and teachers to hate wishing to paint my life and to never let my voice quieten. At 16, Billy started work as a stonemason in Chatham Dockyard, eventually getting into St Martin's College in London on the basis of his drawings. But ever the outsider, he never felt at home in art school. I was there for about a year and a half, and that's when I met Peter. And he was, story, yeah. he was my only sort of friend, really, at St Martin's. I didn't spend much time there. I was usually touring and playing and... I refused to paint in the college again. So eventually I got expelled for, um, they said my poetry was obscene and there's, there's a little, uh, there's a few things that were going on. I really antagonised the head of St Martin's basically and he said he didn't want me in his college anymore. What's unusual about me is I do a lot of things mm. and it's not very mediated and I don't ask people's permission. There is a man with wheels, it's said, who has the use of wheels instead of legs. But he can, if he chooses, put his hands in his shoes and wanderest around on his head. I have this real interest in Dada and I really loved it when I was a kid. I mean, I've even got a tattoo uh, by Kurt Schwitters on my left buttock and I, sort of like, I used the name Kurt Schwitters when I was uh, in my late teens. That's me in 77 in the garden. That's the pop rivets in 78 when we'd given up punk rock. Because you look like the Purple Hearts or something. Remember that? I do remember them, yeah. This is 77, yeah. our first show. Fantastic. The Sex Pistols, sort of like McLaren, I think that this would like to portray this punk rock as this sort of like cynical vehicle that they invented, you know. But the problem was, is that all of us in the uh, provinces, we all believed the lie. And because we believed the lie, it really happened. Oh, wow. So you yeah. were really idealistic about the, the, the values of punk and... It, does, it, does, it informs every single thing I do. Right. Do it yourself. Don't have anyone else telling you what to do. Don't be drugged up. Keep it fun. Do it with your friends. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Self-explanatory. Spell clava. Maria gave me this one. This is a First World War tam more of your winter wear, really. 
got this one in Montreal when I was doing a play in Montreal. This is from the Mighty Caesars when we used to do touring in France. Actually, Tracy gave me this when she went to Turkey one time a million years ago. I'm out of control when she kissed me. What, what did you value when you were going out with Tracy? What did you value about Tracy M in, as an artist? Well, Tracy wasn't an artist when I met her. Mm. In the sense that she didn't, you know, she did say she wanted to be an artist and she was studying fashion. And she's um, very good at actually uh, making things. She made my mum a dress and she knitted some mittens for the, my mum's kittens. <laughs> and she helped me by selling books and she used to organise readings and gigs for us. Let me turn around to pick up the broken glass. Come into the kitchen, I want to go for a piss. There's a toilet upstairs, you know, Ian. Fine, carry me upstairs then. Get it up, horsey! Whoa, horsey. Whoa, ha. Don't call me a whore, Ian. Don't tell me what to say. <laughs> to be brutally honest, I mean, she d didn't learn. Like, I didn't teach her, she just copied me. Mm. You know? And that's um, considered really, that means I must be really angry and hate her and bitter. But I can't help it that that is the truth. If I could find another way of saying it that was nicer. But I mean, I thought she was really good at it. Mm. And the work was good and I liked it. And I thought, you know, nobody else did and everyone slated her for it. When Tracy stopped talking to me in 1989, she told me that no one would never ever know the truth of those things. And, um, so, and she told me she'd have me sued and all sorts of things. I've, there's plenty of room for Tracy, there's plenty of room for Damien Hurst. I think they're over-elevated. And it actually often damages the person and reduces the person. It's all very well for Billy to rant against fame, success and the commodification of art. But what's he got to offer? I've heard he can knock off a painting in an afternoon in his studio. So I want to see if what he produces there is actually any good. So why, why do you have a, stu a studio in your mother's house? Um, well, I used to not have somewhere I lived, so I didn't have much space. And I also was very used to sort of travelling to work, because that means I know what I'm doing. And I only work on one day, so then it, it's not inconvenient, and you're visiting someone anyway, and you haven't got a phone, and you're not doing anything else. These are 19. Um, 11 all right um, Royal flying call overall Today I'm going to do some work, I've, got these, I've been doing these paintings of Walser from photographs of him dead in the snow, he's a writer I really like. He used to go on his walks when he was in the asylum on Christmas day in the 50s, early 50s, he went out for a walk and he dropped dead of a heart attack. This photograph of him lying out in the snow, various police photographs which I really liked. I mean, what are you now, 50? Wouldn't you have preferred to have had a sort of retrospective of Tate Britain and rather than still be perceived as a, an art world outsider? I don't know. It's sort of like very, they're, they're very difficult things, you see. It's like uh, outside can be much more, you can feel much more awake. My work is m much more difficult. And I couldn't make it not more difficult because I don't do the work as a production. I'm painting when I'm painting. Well, there's a feeling in this world that causes unrest. Your ambition and success is what I detest. I try to be true, I'm trying my best I'm not seduced by your cheap love, hatred and mess Oh, you made me die TV's videos, money and vice I'll get you crawling on the floor like a sucking lice you swallow seed before you take advice Or well, someone should have told you, girl, that ain't very nice Oh, you made me die I heard all you gotta say 
I heard it in school about your soft soap sex and your sickly drool. You only care for yourself like all the rest. You love your filthy God and think you're the best. Whoa, you made me die. Whoa, you made me die. I'm not sure that Billy is the world's greatest painter, guitarist, singer or poet, but none of that really matters. I've come away feeling touched by the way this particular artist leads his life, how he's kept control of his work and how he integrates all his creative output. Of course, Billy could have been an art world star like Tracy or Damien, but that's just not what interests him. So do you consider yourself to be an amateur artist? Yeah. Amateur, the meaning of amateur is to do something for the love of it. Yeah. And of course I'm not really an amateur, but it, it's a way of you having a lightness of touch by describing yourself as an amateur. Amateurs are the ones who uh, make the uh, real breakthroughs. The, so really, you say, they're the heroes. And I'm much more interested in being a hero than a professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my romantic nature. <laughs>